I'm Danny, this is Torin, and we're turning a lifeboat into a liveaboard. Before we get started with today's episode, I wanted to give you a quick update on how we're going to film, edit, and upload from now on. Originally, our goal had been to produce one video for every big job that we had to undertake. Unfortunately, we figured out pretty quickly that that's not going to work for us. Some jobs are short, but they're interesting, just not really worth a whole video. Other jobs take forever. For example, our windows, which we'll start today, are still an ongoing project now. We don't want people to have to wait for months or really a year in order to see our progress. What happened when we were filming all of these different projects and just sort of sitting on the footage was that, as you can tell, we've gotten horribly behind and have an overwhelming amount of content to deal with. So our new plan is to go back to the beginning, catch up with where we were when we left off, and edit based on time. Each video will cover two to three weeks of content in the summer and, you know, the winter will be more condensed because we didn't do quite as much, but our goal is to catch up with this summer pretty quickly over the next, you know, couple of months. And our goal is to give you a better idea of the types of projects we've done concurrently, how they all fit together, and where we're going from here. Today's episode starts back in May, where we started to explore all of the various things that Leah had on board when we bought her. The ferry sold her as is where it is and required that we take all of the materials on board. So along with the boat, we got hard hats, enormously thick lines, things like a hundred name tags so you could write your name on the tag, have it around your neck and everybody would know who was who, six enormous oars designed for self-propulsion, and various other boxes of emergency supplies. So here's Torin unpacking one of those and explaining some of the things that came on this Solus certified lifeboat. And again, Luya was designed for 60 people to survive for three days at sea. So she had enough food, water, and provisions to ideally make that happen. Uh, we seem to have a scoop for water, uh, a bunch of anti-nausea pills, probably expired. Oh, no. Still good for a couple years. Uh, some eye wash, flashlight that sort of works. Uh, safety. Oh yeah, we saw that in the video. Yeah, safety on the rope thing. Some type of looks like peacock. Peacock. <laughs> Uh, our fishing line. Um, thermal protection. A couple thermal blankets. And maybe some type of waterproof blanket. Fire starter? Uh, no, it's oh, foam. It's a sponge. It's a foam. More waterproof blankets, more thermal protection. Oh, our life raft survival instructions. Another ring, I think safety ring. Spidey's gonna like those for two joints. Uh, stainless steel. Oh, that's our bottom sledge collector, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Remember they had that thing and we we're like, why would you be taking samples? Sure. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, a our mirror to uh, with the eye hole that we can. Oh yeah. Signal ships with some rusty can openers. Maybe that means we've got some rusty cans of food. <laughs> some old batteries and a ship's whistle and more thermal protection. Oh, what is this? Another fishing lure. I think that's it for that container. Also on board were many of these emergency ration packs, which were basically dehydrated biscuits. Torin and one of his coworkers tried them and they said it was vaguely almond flavored and not as bad as you might think. We ended up giving most of those 
supplies to one of Torin's friends, who's a bit of a prepper, and was very appreciative of all of the items to add to his supply. Once Leah was empty, as you can see, it was time to start deconstruction. And the first thing that we did was saws all through this central tank compartment. We needed to get rid of both the fuel and water tanks to make room and because we'll get a new water tank and of course no longer need the diesel fuel since we're going to electric. We had a friend who was happy to take the diesel off our hands and once the tank was both emptied and cut out of position we were ready to move it. So here we are now on the hard about to lift it out of the boat and onto some scaffolding and you'll see in a second uh, the two-part process to get her both out of the boat and then into the car. And of course it's a bit of a Tetris game which I think any boat is anyway but especially one that is a construction site. We've gotten a bit better about this, but you can see that things are thoroughly disorganized at this point in the build. So you can see that moving the fuel tank out of the boat went relatively smoothly. We also needed to get rid of the water tank. Before we did that, we had to empty it. So Torin got a um, gravity fed shaker thing that was supposed to empty the water for us, but we didn't have the best of luck. I don't even know how this thing works. So. Maybe I should read the instructions first. The manual helped, but the trickle of water we ended up with was no match for the 200 liters we had to get rid of. So once we hauled out, the yard said that since it was clean water, we could just drain it through our bilge. And we made use of a funny feature that Luya came with, which was basically a huge drain. I think the idea was that in a training exercise, she would be lowered down into the water and might get wet inside the cabin. And so when she was raised back up onto the side of the ferry, they would pull this drain plug and let any interior water come out. Now, What's kind of crazy to me, you can see the brass uh, basket there. Inside that, there's a tiny bouncy ball like you might get at a dollar store. And I guess the idea is that if you accidentally pulled the plug while the boat was inside the water, the bouncy ball would come up first and block the hole so you wouldn't sink. We, of course, were not fans of having this in a permanent basis, so that is gone and fiberglassed over. But it was a very cool way to let the water go while we were on the hard and still had the hole in which to do it. Another thing we started very early on and which continued for months, you'll see this again and again, was removing the foam. There is nearly five cubic meters of foam in this boat, which is a huge amount of flotation. And while we're keeping as much as we can, both for flotation and structural reasons, we do need to get rid of quite a bit of it. So here's Torin drilling out and sawzalling our very first piece of the boat to see how thick the fiberglass is and what the foam itself looked like. Interesting. We'll show you some of our foam removal techniques in future episodes, but there's a little taste of what we were up against. From there, it was on to the outside. So these railings under the boat were one of the surprises when we hauled her, and we realized that therefore if it flips over, then you have something to hang on to. And down here, there's some reflecty bits so that if it's hull up, you have a hope of being seen. So we're going to take those out today and have one less thing on our hull and a few less holes in our fiberglass. Because the metal was completely unprotected while it was in the water, those just pulled off in our hands. A couple needed to be undone, but really it was kind of crazy how easily they came off. So I'm taking off these side pieces here, which are to attach it to the ferry. And 
it was all going very well. And then I did not think through the size of the uh, wrench compared to the length of the bolt. And now we are stuck. So that's a bit of an oops. And I guess I have to bolt it back into the boat and then take it back out again and try not to do that with the other seven of these that I have to undo. With all that deconstruction, we wanted to do some construction as well, so we could feel like we were making progress. We started with the side windows and walls, and here's Torin grinding away the fiberglass so that our wood would adhere better to the surface. We're going to fill in this back half of the window, and then have the front half, like you can see on this side. It's the same over here, and that will be glassed in, and then solid on the back half. We started by making a wooden frame adhered to the boat with a Sikaflex and a bolt combo. Here Torrens putting the main cross piece in place. Next we measured the plywood that would be used to skin the new wall of the boat. Because the whole thing is going to be covered in fiberglass it doesn't need to be made out of particularly thick plywood. After roughly cutting the wood, we were ready to start skinning the outside of the boat. At this point, I remember thinking like we were really making good progress. It was pretty exciting to see. Unfortunately, I seem to have missed quite a bit in the filming, but you can see the progress that we made after we cut that original wood out. If, like I was, you're wondering why Torin left big gaps in the wood, it's because this was really more of a framework for the fiberglass to lay over. As long as the wood was providing the main shape for the fiberglass to lay on, we didn't need it to be extremely strong. The fiberglass would be the main strength and structure of the sides. This was more for shape and guidance as we laid it out. Is this a substandard stitch and glue situation here? Yes. What are you doing? Uh, I'm attaching everything with zap straps, which we will, uh, after we've done fiberglassing the outside, we'll cut them off. And, uh, but just to get the shape of the joint correct, we uh, didn't want this to be um, a curved shape, which probably would have been easier, but it wouldn't have matched the rest of the boat. So the idea is that if we have it on the same angles, that the rest of the boat is, then uh, hopefully it'll sort of disappear once we fare it in. Framework complete, it was time to start fiberglassing. Here, Torin's rolling out the chop strand mat, which is what we had selected for this part of the job. After measuring the first length, Torin carefully cut it out, and as you'll see in a minute, proceeded to dry fit it onto Luya. For this part of the build, since it was going to be large but flat surfaces, we decided to use chop strand mat and polyester resin. The resin is a hardener, which helps turn the fiberglass from the soft, rollable cloth you see here to, in this case, the solid hull of our boat. Another option is a two-part epoxy, something like West Systems, which many of you will have seen in ship's chandleries. We've used that before and again, but for this case, we thought the polyester resin was the best bet because we could mix larger batches and hope to be able to more quickly cover such a large surface. In order to keep it from hardening in the container before you can even put it on anything, resin and epoxy both come in two parts. When you mix the two parts together, a chemical reaction occurs and it hardens, or as we call it, kicks. You need it to kick after it's on the fiberglass, and that's going to become important in a minute. Things that alter how fast it kicks include the specific type of chemical formulation, but also the temperature. The day we did this was about 15 degrees Celsius, and we thought that should give us enough time to work on a fairly large surface. The hotter it is, generally, the faster and smaller you need to work. The first step was rolling the resin onto the bare wood until it stopped soaking it up. 
This gives a waterproof and prepared surface to apply the glass to. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before we discovered a problem. The polyester resin was kicking so much faster than we anticipated, and Torn wasn't able to get it on the boat before it turned into a gloopy mass of gross, jellied, unusable resin goo. So here he is trying to clean out the resin bucket. I don't think that one made it to see another day. And regrouping, thinking about making smaller batches because the installation was, shall we say, not going to plan. After cleaning up as best as he could, Torin started to install the actual fiberglass over the prepared wood. Unfortunately, this went about as well as what you just saw. We were having the same problems. It was kicking really, really fast despite the very reasonable temperature. And we were also finding that where the West Systems two-part epoxy we'd used before does a really nice job of soaking in and sort of flattening the cloth out, this was bubbling and hardening strangely, wasn't soaking in very well and it wasn't flattening out nicely. We were ending up with sort of a volcanic, uh, yeah, baking soda and vinegar experiment gotten wrong style a cover to our boat, which of course was not at all what we wanted. So you can see how hard Torin is rolling with the fiberglass roller to try and push the resin into the fiberglass and have it flatten out properly, but it was not really going to plan. After pouring and rolling and pouring and rolling and flattening and trying his best to get the cloth to stick to the boat in a somewhat flat and orderly manner, Torin had to let the whole sorry mess kick and see what happened. And what happened was something which was fairly hard but also fairly hard to deal with. Here Torin's trying to sand out some of the high spots and bubbles and very weird way that this uh, fiberglass was behaving in comparison to what we'd worked with before. Basically anywhere you can see sort of the yellowing very obvious material, that's a problem. It hasn't attached properly to the boat or to itself and frankly it just doesn't look very good. It was somewhere around this time that we realized that this method of fiberglassing but also frame building and really the whole concept we'd come up with for this wall had been a giant mistake. And so there were hours ahead of us of fixing and undoing and redoing and a whole new plan to be created and implemented. But you're going to have to tune in next week to watch that. <clears throat> next episode, to be clear. I'm not promising you an episode next week. But next episode, we'll go through the second half of May. A big project will be the windows. We have other things to look at as well. Please come back and join us. We love having you follow along on this project with us. Thank you to so much to everybody who is subscribing, supporting us. A few of you have found us on Patreon. It's amazing. We hadn't even promoted our little baby Patreon, but thank you so much to our early patrons. We love that uh, vote of confidence coming from the back corner. It's very, very much appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you soon with more of the saga of the walls and the windows. Have a great day.